Hi, this is Gilly Goldfarb and welcome to my Gorilla Life Coaching videos. Five times a week I talk about a quote that can help you move your life to a better, healthier and happier place for you and I hope you gain a lot of value from these videos. So how are you doing today? I hope you feel happy because our quote of the day is about depression. Today our quote of the day is, it is so difficult to describe depression to someone who's never been there because it's not sadness. Sadness is to cry and to feel but it's that cold absence of feeling, that really hollowed out feeling. This is what J.K. Rowling, uh, the author of Harry Potter, the Harry Potter series says about depression. It looks like, it feels like you're looking into an abyss and it seems as if there is no end in sight. As someone once said, there is no off switch. I made this video because depression is such a widespread problem in the world today. Even well-adjusted people may feel depressed at different stages in their life to a point that it can interfere, interfere with their daily functioning. But I want you to know that you can heal from depression with commitment, and this commitment is not only for your own sake, but also for the sake of those around you who are part of your life. In the dictionary, depression is defined as a state uh, of feeling very unhappy without hope for the future. Depression is also defined as a mental illness in which a person is very unhappy and anxious for long periods of time and cannot have a normal life during these periods. Psychology shows that almost all depressive states are either brought on by certain drugs or certain behavioral patterns. If, if you experienced states of depression after starting with a certain medication for something completely different, then a change of medication can be a relief to the depression. At these times, you may not have the awareness to understand that the depressive state was triggered by a different medication, and perhaps family members can help you with this situation. I remember when this happened to one of my daughters, taking her anti-epileptic medication. It made her reach a serious state of depression. When we changed her medication, the situation improved rapidly. Depressive states are also brought on by certain behavioral patterns, as I said. The behavioral patterns that lead to depression include having specific feelings and specific thoughts and specific behaviors that lead to depression. When we learn to control these three act activities that I'll talk about in a minute now, we can control depression and even remove it from our life completely. But this change in actions takes real dedication as anything worthwhile in our life requires. So let's look into the feelings that trigger depression. These feelings include feelings of worthlessness, pessimism, and guilt feelings. Now, the thoughts that trigger depression are thoughts that are of self-punishing and self-deprecating thoughts and pessimistic thoughts. And the behaviors that trigger uh, depression include lack of physical activity, uh, lack of a proper posture, and lack of pleasurable activities in your life. So what can we do about this? Well, a person suffering from depression feels that they cannot control their environment, and often they feel rightly so about this. This feeling of lack of control forms a state of helplessness. They believe that no one can help them and that they can't get themselves out of this situation by themselves. An example from my life was after the birth of my two elder daughters who were born with severe mental disability and epilepsy. I felt totally helpless. I felt I had no control over my situation and I really had no control over it. And to top this off, I was also blamed to be the cause of this situation by my ex-husband at the time. I felt so worthless and so guilty. Changing our perception of a situation will help change the thoughts and feelings about the situation. I'll get into this in just a moment. But also changing your environment is of major importance for relieving depression. A person may uh, feel depressed because they feel isolated because of their situation or because they lack the social skills to join activities with other people. They may feel sorry for themselves and remove themselves from social interactions or may just not have the social skills to know how to react with other people in a positive way. Positive feelings, pos our own self-positive feelings also come from other people's positive feelings and thoughts about us. So when we are confined to interacting with very negative people around us 
or not enough people to get positive feedback, we will feel feelings of worthlessness, guilt, and pessimism. And this often happens with depression in the elderly population, as well as at any age. But with the elderly population, you see that their sources of positive reinforcement may have died, such as a spouse or a close friend, or may have moved on in their life, such as a close uh, worker, healthcare worker that was involved in their life. And this is why learning good social skills is of major importance in getting out of depression. When my daughters were born, I felt totally isolated. No one understood me. My daughter's situation was not diagnosed until the elder, until my elder daughter was actually two years old, and the youngest one was nine months. And I myself did not understand what was wrong. I could not go to normal play areas, to, to play groups, or send them to childcare. Learning social skills is a great way to help yourself. Today we have the internet, and we can even feel comforted and connected just by reading forums where other people uh, are coping with similar situations and they talk about what they are feeling and what they are doing to help themselves. Just by reading that other people are coping with similar situations and by perhaps even going to meetups uh, with other people that are going through similar events or having similar interests can be so supportive and even fun. Now, fun is something that is a very important factor for being happy and taking part in regular pleasurable activities is crucial. As difficult as it may seem, this is very, very important to do. Now, asking for help is also a major step in the right direction. I made a video about how you can ask for help, which I recommend watching. I'll provide a link at the end of this video. I've also made videos on assertive behavior, listening skills, and uh, about how to uh, cope with naysayers in your life, which you can find links to at the end of this video as well. I will also make another video on great social skills. Now, these will help you make good, stable connections with other people in your life. Also, physical movement is of major importance. Going back to the elderly example, in the elderly, their physical skills often diminish with age, reducing the amount of pleasure they feel that they can have. Learning new ways to attain pleasure and to enjoy different um, activities and different things than before is a good way not only to prevent depression, but also to prevent the risk of dementia. Now, the next step is to transform your thoughts and feelings. During depression, people tend to focus on the negative side of things. People that are most prone to depression focus on the negative. They are usually pessimistic in their thought patterns, and they ignore the positive aspect of many, many things. I myself saw only the negative side of my situation, and I saw no light at the end of the tunnel. This is a distorted perception of reality, and often comes from having unrealistically high standards for ourselves, or holding the belief that other people hold these high standards for us, even people that don't even know us. People in our community, we may feel that that we have that we are supposed to reach uh, a certain standard for other people to like us and accept us. And uh, this can also come from people in our own vicinity, naysaying us with words like, nothing will ever come out of you, come from you, or you can't do anything right. And this makes us constantly self-criticize ourselves, as we all will often fail to meet these unrealistically high standards. And because of this distorted view of reality, we will lack self-praise and will not be aware of any advances that we are making or anything good about us. We do not feel worthy or good enough because our standards are much too high to go by in the long term on a, consist on a consistent basis. We also often do not get praise from other people because we frequently have contact with people who are either very negative or because we are afraid to go out there because of fulfilling the prophecy that we are told that nothing will come out of us or that we can't do anything right. We also lack contact with optimistic people because generally we attract people that are like us. 
So how can you overcome these depressive episodes? I found that there are five things that can be done to slowly move you out of the depressive state. Number one is express your feelings. Find someone to talk to uh, about the impact uh, on your life that a situation has had uh, that led to your depression. Talk about the shame, the grief, the loss, or the anger that you are feeling. It is natural to feel this way, and it is good to talk about these feelings and find perhaps other ways of seeing the situation that can make you feel better with what has happened. Know that every situation can be perceived negatively or in, even in a positive eye. And I made a video about this previously, which I truly recommend that you watch. I will provide a link at the end of this video to it. You also want to improve your social skills, as I said. Find other sources of reinforcement. Meet new people while learning to be more assertive so that you don't feel led or coerced by other people. Learn how to connect with other people more positively by becoming a better listener to other people. It is important, so important to improve your social skills to be happy. You also want to add more pleasurable events to your life. You can do this by forming, first of all, a list of things that make you happy, that please you, that you can indulge in, in a regular, on a regular basis, in, even in small amounts. Situations that make you feel good. I, for example, like visiting my grandmother. Just sitting there with her makes me feel good, makes me feel better about myself. Also, I recommend you exercise. Even a small amount of exercise will totally transform your mind physically to form these mental changes that are needed. Walking daily, even for a short period, at any speed, no matter the speed, it's not for the fitness, nor is it for the weight loss, but for your mental health. This can form a major change in attitude. I personally exercise every day just for my mental health. <laughs> not for the way it helps it makes me look or, or anything physical about it it's just for my mental health and I do a meditation during my exercise exercise also will help you improve your posture which is uh, almost impossible to be depressed when you're standing upright in a, in a good posture I made a video about this as well also self-praise is very very important you want to praise yourself for what you have achieved or for how you are coping with the situations in your life. As small as the praise may be, you are better off than being without any praise at all. You may feel also free to reduce your standards in some areas of your life to more realistic standards. Feel free to do this. This is very important and there is really nothing wrong with lowering your standards. You will feel happier in the long term. Also, coping with lower standards in time will help you become better at slowly reaching higher standards for yourself. You cope with the, you cope with the uh, lower standards and then you have more energy and more self-esteem and more self-belief to cope with higher standards. So it is very important. Now, the best thing about coming out of depression, out of a state of depression, is that you will always be able to love more than most people and to enjoy more than most people because you've been in the dark place, in this very, very dark place. And you learn to appreciate much more everything about the light, much more intensely. So, as I always do with these videos, I provide you with a question that you want to ask yourself so that the answer can help you move your life to a better place for you. And the questions of the day are, which areas of my life cause me depression? Which areas of my life do I feel worthless and not good enough? And how can I lower my standards, meet new people, improve my posture, and fit exercise into my regular schedule so that I can overcome this sense of depression. I, As usual, I recommend writing this question and your answers in a notebook that you have especially prepared for these coaching sessions so that you can improve your life and reach a better, healthier, happier state for yourself. So to finish off, the affirmation of the day is, I am worthwhile and I am committed to a life of happiness for my own good and for the good of those around me. I am a worthwhile person and I am committed 
to a life of happiness for my own good and for the good of those around me. Now tell this to yourself as many times as you remember to do so today because an affirmation has so much power once repeated to completely transform your life. So I hope you liked this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Please also subscribe to my channel and uh, visit my website, thegorilladiet.com for anything to help you move your health and wellness to a better place for you. Thank you very much for joining.